it's all sanded, it's really dirty. Okay, so I've got a nice bucket of um, paint. <laughs> that paint's in there warming up, in case you wonder. A uh, nice bucket of sort of soapy water, just washing up liquid because it's got like a degreaser in it. I wouldn't advise um, washing your car, washing up liquid normally because it normally has sort of um, some kind of salt in there and it can cause corrosion. But we're just going to wash this down and then dry it immediately. And also it's an aluminium um, thing so it's not, you know, it's not going to rust. So yes, wash time and then I'm going to have to get the filler out and I want to fill up that hole and this is going to need a bit of tidying up as well. I think that's been over tightened in the past and it's sort of um, damaged the metal there. Before I get the filler out, I want to really get some paint on the bare metal. So I'm just going to put some uh, red oxide paint onto the bare metal. And then think about getting the filler out. And before I paint it, I've washed it, I've dried it. Now I want to use a degreaser. So I use a little thing of degreaser on a cloth and just give it a wipe over before painting. Put lots of masking paper around the bits I don't want to paint on. But obviously, if we're going to have this issue. We don't want any more paint going that way. This is the cut off point. Now, you don't want to mask so there's a bloody great line going across because that looks really bad. So, what I do is I get the paper and I fold it or hang it so it's just sort of over the bit where you want to spray. So now we put the masking tape over. This is just the way I do it. I'm not saying it's the right way. All right? And then we fold that back. I would put it a bit further back. So what we can have then is instead of having a perfectly straight line, we've now got a bit of a curve, if that makes sense. It's not a straight line. We'll try not to spray too close to this, so we're only going to look for a bit of overspray over there. I'll give it a go and we'll see what it looks like. It might look terrible. I better mask up the number plate light first. That'll do. One thing I hate most in the world is shaking cans. This is what I like to use on Jesse. Works well.
Always do a light coat first, concentrating on any bare metal areas. Coming out a bit vicious. As I say, we're concentrating on bare metal. and horrible to begin with but trust me it'll get better we'll let this thin coat dry out for 10-15 minutes and then we'll give it a little bit more of a heavier coat and again just concentrating on the bare metal areas because at the end of the day this is prime already and this is paint already. We don't need to reprime what we've already got. So it's a waste of paint otherwise. We want to concentrate on the, the bare bits. then tell me what you want you want to go in right I want to show you <laughs> I want to show you a way of repairing a hole in a car okay this was common back in the day I don't think you ever see it now uh, and I'm about to do it to my car now I wouldn't I don't want to recommend doing this to your car because it's not the right way you know really this hole in this boot needs some metal welding into it but it's aluminium so it will need aluminium welding into it not as not as uh, common as, as welding steel um, and I can't be bothered really so how they used to repair these sorts of holes in the past by using a penny <laughs> so what I'll be doing is using super glue. I bet there's people cringing out there. Super glue and a little bit of some uh, Bostic glue there. And I'm going to glue this penny. I can't do it with one hand. But I'm going to be gluing that penny flat behind that hole because I can get behind it. I'm going to glue that penny in there. And then when the glue's done and everything's dry, I'm then going to smear filler over the hole. So the filler will stick to the penny and through the hole and fill it in. This one penny coin is 10 years younger than this Rover. It's dated 1971. An ideal penny to use because after 10 year old, uh, 10 years of, of use, I'd imagine the car may have seen some some corrosion come through so a brand new penny from 1971 may have been used so what I'm trying to say here is by using an old penny if in the future this penny is discovered people will think that it was fitted in the 1970s if I was to fit a modern coin from 2019-20 They'll know it was me. So this is a good way of hiding the fact that you bodged your own car up. <laughs> so I've used the Bostic glue, which is a sort of um, elasticy type glue. It's really gooey. <laughs> um, I've spread that over the penny and then I pushed it into the hole. Now it's into the hole. I've then dollop some super glue on top so the super glue will help harden the gooey glue and by doing that you're giving it a good seal against the back of the boot if you say we're repairing a hole uh, in a wing 
and all the water and um, salt could kick up behind the penny um, and that could aid corrosion but with it being in the boot it's not really going to get any corrosion in there and I think it's a good enough bodge for today have a look Now I didn't poke the queen's head out the hole. I thought that was disrespectful. So she's facing into the boot. Yeah, once that glue's dry and everything, I can put a bit of filler over that and it disappears. Right, that's the final coat I'm gonna put on today. So that's it now for today, masking's off. So you can see there is a line, but it's not a straight thick line. This is just sort of um, feathery. So when it comes to putting the black on, I'll be sanding that down so it's quite, um, you know, so it blends in, sort of feathery. In. Right, so the next day, I'm at Burian Classics because I don't trust the weather today. <laughs> And uh, we've got lots to do. We've got panels to put back on. I've got me a spare wheel door to go back on underneath with the quarter panels and we get all that back together today. So the overspray line here is not a thick line, as you know, because I explained that. I've just got some, um, what do you call this, Linden? Scotch bright? scotch bright here so it's not sandpaper and all I'm doing is sort of scoring up the black part just the edge and uh, the primer to sort of blend that in and get that ready for paint and hopefully we can blend it in I don't know if it's gonna work but we'll have a go and then I'm gonna go all over the primer and sort of score it up ready for the the black top coat right before I do any more I've got to put filler over my little penny there. Now I hate mixing filler. I never know if I'm doing it right. But whatever I do normally works. So I've got a little mixing board here. Here's the filler. We don't need a great deal. Scoop some out. It's probably too much, but that'll do. Now I need to put the hardener on. This is why I never know whether I'm doing it right or not. Whoa. So it's like, I don't know, that much hardener for that much filler. Something like that normally works. Then you've got to mix it all together. This is going to be messy. So I decided that the few bits I'd done weren't good enough, if that makes sense. So these three little bits here that I sanded yesterday, they sort of were, were like a sunken bits. So when you put the paint on it, it looked like someone had sort of put their fingers in it. So I've got this stuff here that was recommended to me by Lyndon. <laughs> At Berry and Classics. Uh, called Dolphin Glaze. So it's like a really thin filler that you just sort of skim on and it just takes away any imperfections. 
So I've gone over these few bits. My penny's all filled in. And uh, I think that'll, that'll look good. So once once these are dry, I've just been using a heat gun to aid it along. Because um, it's a bit chilly out here. Once that's dry, I can sand it down, put a bit more red oxide over the filler. So the filler has gone off and I've sanded it down with a DA, which is an orbital sander. So you can see here now where the filler is, that was those um, sunken patches I could see. So the filler's now filled those. We've got some bare metal, but that's all right. We've got to paint that anyway. So I'm going to get the red oxide. I'm just going to paint that, that, and that now, because we don't have to go over the top. That's all okay. This is that hole that I filled in with the penny. It feels a bit raised. It's probably not going to look amazing, but I'll give it a go. If not, I'll stick a sticker over it. Why not? And then I tidied up this area around the boot catch as well. All right, more red oxide. Oh dear, rubbish me. I forgot to put the camera on for the first coat of paint. <laughs> so that's the first coat, it's just a light dust in a black, concentrating on the edges. You can't see very well in this lighting, it's very dark. looking better already isn't it right this is about three coats bear in mind Jesse's paintworks awful so I'm just using satin black <laughs> and the satin black I'm putting on is actually glossier than the paint that Jessie already has. <laughs> so as you can see I've been pulling the paper back to um, sort of get rid of the, the line. So now I've, I've pulled it right back so when I do the next coat it's just going to be a light dusting that goes over there. I'm not, I'm not going to point the can at that area. I don't want to spray that bit but it's going to get over spray on it. So when I do eventually polish it, it should just sort of fade in and feather in. I don't think it's looking too bad. It's hard to tell in this light but it's better than it was, isn't it? That's the main thing. I'm not a bodywork expert. It's day 265 and I finally got the P4 finished. No, I'm only really joking. <laughs> so I, I had last week off and as you know I started tidying up the boot, sanding it down, getting rid of all those horrible blemishes. Um, I showed you the footage in the unit and it was a bit dark. So it's daylight today, I've got the car out, just been out to the shop and I thought I'd have a little look around it in daylight. Okay, although it's still a bit dark because it's uh, by the garage. If you look carefully you can see there's overspray on this primer. You can just about see the line of where the overspray stopped. Now once I've let this dry a bit longer, probably next weekend, once I've got the polish out and I polish along that line, they should blend together a lot nicer without the obvious line. But it looks a lot tidier. I got my stripped badge, which is down to the, the copper coating rather than the chrome, because the chrome was awful. And it looks a lot nicer like that. I could paint it silver, but I quite like it looking like that. Obviously my new number plates. The replacement chrome plinth I got had a stud missing, so I didn't use that in the end. And I, I polished this one up a bit, it looks a bit better. I've also fitted this um, rubber strip along the edge. I don't know if it would have had that from new, but I thought that tidied it up a bit and gave it a nice clean look. 
And that's as good as I could polish that one up. But yeah, no more marks here, no more marks under here, no more faint remnants of a sticker. The, the hole has disappeared. Not bad job. And even better so, I finally got my skirts back on. Now she's all dirty. I did wash her the other day, but the roads are so filthy. So I've got my skirts back on. They've been painted inside and out. They've been stone chipped and wax oil on the inside. So they're well protected from the weather. There's little mud flaps in there as well, which protect them. This skirt has been painted and that's back on. Same with this side. And then the door, now look, <laughs> looks a bit silly. That well, didn't look too bad. But I, I painted those spaces. I painted them silver by mistake. I meant to do them black. Can you see? <laughs> and there's also a massive gap between the panel. And whatever I did, I couldn't close those gaps off. So, I don't know if it's had reproduction quarter panels or something. I've tried a few different doors I've got and the doors are all identical. It's something to do with these quarter panels. But there's there's no adjustment in them now. So that's as good as that's going to get. And I spent ages painting this little handle and you can't even believe me see it. I didn't even know that. I thought you'd be able to see it. Bumper's not amazing, it's bent, quite a bit of corrosion coming through. I have got another bumper, but it needs re-chroming. And I think that's going to be expensive. So I'll put it off for a little bit, because it doesn't look terrible. The overriders, thankfully, are in quite good condition. And I'm hoping that I've put them on the right way round. Because <laughs> they were both lying there, and I didn't know which was left and which was right. I think they look alright. Again, I've put new, a new seal along there. I also give the exhaust a bit of a scotch up. Make it look silver instead of rusty. Oh, and also, <laughs> also, um, as you know, this wing's been painted as well. And the chrome trim's been put back on, but I was short a few of the little clips. So I need to get some more of the little clips to hold the trim on. Yeah, it looks a lot nicer, a lot cleaner. <laughs>